Well, we've got to take a little trip down memory lane. Uh, you're the first black player to win the PFA Player of the Year, the big award, yep. in the 87-88 season. Mm -hmm. What's your standout memory from that year? My standout memory was really, um, obviously, my first year at Liverpool. Uh, was just what a great team it was. You know, I came from Watford, and the whole philosophy of Watford was about the team, how good the team was. Forget the individuals. I had six years at Watford. I've been playing for England for four years, so I didn't come to Liverpool. I was 23, so I was young. But my whole attitude was about how the team was. And my standout memory about that, really, as much as I won the player of the year, was how many players we had in the team of the year. And we had six or seven in the team of the year. It was just a great season for the team. It was a great season for me, obviously. Um, but uh, it was more to do with the fact that it was just a fantastic team that I played in. And as much as I may have been given the award, five or six of those players could have won it. Yeah, fantastic team. And the transition from Watford to being in a team of superstars, how did you manage that at the time? Well, interestingly, it wasn't that difficult because Liverpool players didn't see themselves as superstars. The fans did. And as I said, growing up at Watford with Graham Taylor, people may have looked at me and Luther as the superstars of the team, but we never saw ourselves that way. The other players didn't see us that way. We were a part of a team, we were a part of a family. Coming to Liverpool, which is a much bigger club, with you would say superstars in it, but the way they acted, Ian Rush, Alan Hansen, they acted like normal members of the team, even the, the, the subs or the people in the squad. And that was a Liverpool thing. Run them around the coach, always call them the big heads, you know, the ones who were the so-called special players. Um, but we were no more important than our teammates. So the transition was fairly easy because, you know, as you say, you're coming into a, a dressing room where you have superstar players. If they acted that way, that could have been quite intimidating. Peter Bersley came as well as the most expensive signing at that particular time, which helped me, and Ray Houghton came as well. So what really helped me was that I was the only new player. Kenny had retired, Rushi had gone to Juventus, and they're the superstars, if you like, who scored the goals. How are me and Peter, John Aldridge, going to then continue that? And from the first, I'd have to say, in the first week in training before we played the first game, it was if we just played together all our lives. So it was very enjoyable. And from a personal point, you chip in with 15 goals that season. Did you feel like you were having a really good year or was it just a case of games go, games go and you keep scoring, keep winning? Well, it's not so much from the scoring point of view because, of course, I was there to create chances yeah. for John Aldridge, which is what I did. So the goals for me were a bonus. You know, the way I played was completely different to the way the wild players played. But now. more goals than assists that year, which is, a, which is a big thing from the position you were playing. Well, I don't know about that. I'm sure I had more than 15 assists. The, I can't believe the that. Stats might the stats, stats, stats might be lying to you. The stats are lying to you. <laughs> yeah. It must have been. I can't imagine. But I didn't look at stats about how many assists yeah. you had. Yeah. You played, and if you, if you... So put it this way, if I didn't have any assists, but I tracked back and stopped two goals and stopped the, the, the winger putting crosses in, the fact that I didn't make any assists didn't matter. Yeah. You know, you're helping the team to win. And if I had to beat five players, pass to Ronnie Whelan, who then passed to John Rodgers to score, and it's his assist. Yeah. So, so the whole stats didn't, I mean, stats, goals, stats has always been there. But yeah. in terms of assists and corners won or defending or tackles or blocks, that wasn't a thing back then. You know, you knew when you played well without yeah. knowing how many assists you had or how many tackles you made. So the whole idea about who runs further than anybody else and the stats will show that wasn't around in my day. Yeah. And in many respects, that's not really important. What's important is winning football matches and being part of a team that does that. And mentality-wise, that's such a big thing we talk about now in football. What motivated you during those periods, especially in this season when you won the big awards? What motivated me what was what motivated me ever since I was a young boy playing football in Jamaica and the way my dad brought me up in terms of maximise your potential by your effort and your commitment and your responsibility to the team and to yourself. That's my motivation ever since I was a young boy. Unfortunately, not so much with the schoolwork, but with, mm -hmm. with the sport. So when I went to Watford, Graham Taylor espoused those virtues and those values and coming to Liverpool was the same thing. It was about the effort the effort that you put into training every day, which means that when you play on a Saturday, it all comes together. But it's not about playing on a Saturday, it's about the preparation you put into it. So my motivation was just trying to do as well as I could. Um, and of course, coming to Liverpool and then seeing the motivation, which is probably a little bit different than at Watford. At Watford, we were happy to be in the top division and to be beating the big boys. We've come up on the fourth division, isn't this great? But the pressure of having to perform and having to win matches um, probably gave, us, gave me that which I learned that extra motivation from the players when we drew a match or if we lost a match and, you know, at Watford it wouldn't hurt us that much, but to see the way they were around here when that happened or even in training, when we were doing anything in training, that really, and I was, I, was an ex, I was 23, I was experienced. I'd been playing for England for four years, so I wasn't a young player coming in, I understood. I love that you say experienced at 23. It's, it's well, great. I've been playing since yeah. I was 17. Yeah. And I've been, you know, I, I played nearly as many times for England when I was at Watford, then I was at Liverpool. Of yeah. course, Liverpool catapulted me to, you know, in terms of maybe, you know, the global situation or even more the national situation in terms of people knowing about me. But I had six years at Watford, 
as many, nearly as many caps, um, the goal against Brazil, the things that Watford were doing, was all while I was at Watford, which stood me in good stead to come to Liverpool. If I'd come to Liverpool at 18, 19, with the pressures that that brings, it may have been different. But um, yeah, the six years at Watford really grounded me in terms of what I needed to do when I went on to a, be a bigger But we've got a bit of a difficult task. So we've got every former PFA Player of the Year winner here. First of all, let me tell you, it's not going to be a difficult task at all. You've got it all in your head already? No, like, I haven't. Yeah. But whichever decision I make is not a wrong decision. I'll tell you why, because they're all such fantastic players yeah. that whichever players you pick, whichever players you choose, either to play or to say is the best player, is not wrong. Yeah. It's not right. wrong. Unless Maradona. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's not <laughs> snuck in. <laughs> They've not snuck in otherwise. They're clear. Um, or Pelé. So we've got them in positions. We've got goalkeepers, we've got defenders, we've got midfielders, attackers. We need to pick a team of five you can put yourself in. I'll be the manager. You'd be the be as eager gaffer to Barnes, yeah. yeah. I won't be as eager, eager to, to, to put me in. Uh, so unless they're paying more, paying the players more. <laughs> See the keepers, it's, it's harsh, really. Only two, four, only we got yeah. uh, only two former winners here. In two former winners, yeah. Well, I played with with Peter. Yeah, of course. Well, so did Pat Jennings. Called Peter's played in 1969. Yeah. Everybody's played with Peter, and he's a fantastic <laughs> goalkeeper. I'd have to go with a shot stopper. I think Pat was quite good coming for crosses and stuff like that. Whereas Schultz was a goalkeeper who stayed on the line and in a five-a-side team that's what you want so and because I played with him and I know him better I would go for Schultz. Schultz gets the nod if we pop Peter that Schultz. on there. Get him, get, get him in. Is, there a, is there a keeper from the Premier League era who you think potentially deserves to be in that list? Bruce Grobbler. Yeah. Imagine Bruce because Bruce used to come out and play and of course they were taught they thought he was crazy when he's doing that in the 80s because of course all the players now come out and do it and that's why the best goalkeeper now with that is edison at man city yeah. if you want to play that type of football i don't think he's necessarily the best goalkeeper shot stopping but if you want a goalkeeper who comes out and plays it will be edison Together. one defender paul mcgraw virgil van dyke john terry so that's a big back three so that's sturdy well do I have to do it, or can I look at everybody and have a look? Have a look. Okay. Yeah, you can. Because okay. if, if you have if you have a midfield player who can defend as well, maybe I will only have one defender. What's Teddy doing there? Mares. Oh no, <laughs> that's done it. That's done it. It's all over. It's all over. What a list of players. D straight in. Straight in. Liam Brady, my favourite player. He's not British. Went to Juventus, best player in Italy. He was a fantastic footballer. People on they don't know about Liam Brady, but he was just the most incredible footballer I've seen. Glenn Hollow was fantastic as well. But so, so there's one. I'm gonna have to have a defender, obviously. Um, so Brady gets the nod, yeah. Yeah. Stephen's gonna go in. <laughs> we'll get on to Stephen Gerald in a second. He's going to go in, yeah. Okay. He's going to go in, yeah. John Wall. Wall okay, okay. So what have I got? I've got a goalkeeper. Got a goalkeeper. And I've got Liam Brady. Yeah. What was it about Steven Gerrard? Obviously, because, listen, so much has been said. Um, amazing player here. When you talk about, and, and of course, when you talk about individual players and you talk about the best individual players, and it's difficult to choose because they all score goals, don't yeah. they? Or they all defend well, or they all look at the defenders. They're all great players. But when it comes to midfield players and you say, right, who's the best midfield player? Paul Scholes, a great attacking midfield player. Where's he gone? Kante, great defensive midfield player. And Paul Scholes is probably more successful than Steven, as is Roy Keane. But then you say, OK, forget about them in their teams. Look at them as individuals. Now, you have to be able to tackle, make long passes, dribble, short passes, headers. Paul Scholes, great attacking midfield player. Does he defend? Probably not. Roy Keane could do both. And when you look at somebody who could be an attacking, if, and I knew Steve when he was a kid, if it was decided for Steven Gerrard, at 13 years old, that you're gonna be a defensive midfield player like Kante. He'd be the best defensive midfield player in the world. If he decided he's gonna be an attacking midfield player as he was, but of course, as he got older, he went back, or you have to play on the right side of midfield. So if you want someone who can attack, defend, head, tackle, dribble. So it's the completeness the complete, of Steven Gerrard. The complete, complete midfielder. Complete midfielder. Complete midfielder. Long passes, short passes, dribbling, tackling, heading, Defensive attacking and, 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 you know, other midfield players probably have been more successful, as I said, Paul Scholes and, you know, Roy Keane and people. But when you look at them and say what attributes they have for a midfield player. So you've got Schultz, him, Brady. Yep. Need now we to, need, a, need, defender. Two more and we need a, a defender and a, a forward. So and you're a forward. A, a one, two, one. Yeah, you have to. You, you have to. Because Steven Gerrard can get back yep. and defend as well, as can Liam Brady, and he's very creative. So Thierry will be somewhere there or thereabouts of what he can actually do. Kenny. Kenny would be there. 
I would put Rashi. Rashi over Henri? Yeah. As a goal scorer. Thierry comes wide, he scores goals, he, he does everything. But when you talk about somebody just to be in the box to score a tap in or the ball's coming in, um, Rashi I would put gets Rashi. the nod. Rashi will get the nod, yeah. Need a defender. He's an incredible defender. Paul McGrath. And he can play midfield. Got big Virgil here too. Yeah. And, and there's one more. And John Terry. John Terry. John Terry's a fantastic defender. But John Terry played in a Chelsea team where you had midfield players in front of you to protect you. They defended deep and one against one in a big open space. Rio would be better than John with his pace and stuff like that. Whereas John defends when he organizes well when he's got bodies around him. Gets hit in the face, but Chelsea were a great defensive team with um, Rio. Unlucky to not be in this. Rio would be this. unlucky, and as an individual footballer, in terms of his pace, his reading of the game, whereas John really was in a great team and he's a great defender. Don't get me wrong; he'd get hit in the face, and he's a better defender than Rio, if you like. But I think he needs bodies around him because he hasn't got that pace to necessarily yeah. read the game well. Um, Paul McGraw was incredible. So he's going to be between these two, Paul McGraw Virgil, and Virgil. Paul McGraw, yeah. It's going to be between Virgil and Paul McGraw. Uh, because don't forget, he won it when he was finished, when he went to Aston Villa. Because don't forget, he was at you know, Man United and a place like that before, and he won it after. And as a defender, Virgil's a great defender. He's also very good on the ball, and he reads the game well. But in a five-a-side, when he needs somebody to be... And in fact, if you ask Rashid, who's the best defender he hated playing against Morris, it was Paul McGrath. What was it about Paul that just made him so difficult to, to play against? He was quick. He was strong. He was, he was good on the ball, but as a defender, you just couldn't get past him. So couldn't Paul, get past Paul McGrath him. gets Paul McGrath the final spot there. in the team. That's the final spot, yeah. It's a very strong... So as a... As a, as a got one as a, sub spot. As a sub spot, he's going to have to be someone who... Where, now, now where this team thinking? that I picked is, a, is not necessarily the best players, but it's a best team to play a football match, to win a football yeah. match. You know, you've got better individual... You may have better individual players, but to put them together as a team... You think that's going to win games? Uh, that will win games. So... Um, as a sub to win football matches, not to be the best player. Uh, Versatile. Wayne Rooney. I was looking at Burkamp, but I think if you want someone to play midfield as well, to defend, even to play at the back or whatever, uh, Wayne Rooney. So Wayne Rooney gets the final spot. As, as, on, on the bench, Wayne. It's a hell of a team. Nice. I'm happy with that team. I think it wins a lot of games. 